man, is this a beautiful spot or what? I've got camp pretty well set up here. Just want to give you a quick tour. As you can see, my boat is in the water there. I got a campfire going. And let me just walk you around uh, camp here for a little bit so you can see. All right, I've got some firewood cut up so far. I got to split a lot of it, of course. I've got a tarp there to tarp it down so it doesn't get rained on. My tent set up. I got carpet pads in here, which is nice for uh, keeping sand out of your tent. This is a cot with a simple inflatable self-inflating mattress on it and a sleeping bag. And I keep my clothes in a tote because I've been in situations like this where it just rains so much that you no, know, even a good waterproof tent you can't completely keep the water out of it. And if you got a suitcase or duffel bag laying on the floor, you're gonna have wet clothing. So I always bring my clothes in a plastic tote. And of course, I got some bear spray, which I hope I don't have to use, and a flashlight. Here's my kitchen area that's I'm getting it set up now. Uh, I'm just working on that right now. So I'll do some cooking on this cook stove and then some also on the campfire. And you'll see that over the next few days here. That con cooler is supposed to be bear proof, and uh, there's a chance we might have to find out whether it is or not. Um, hopefully we won't have any bear trouble, but we are in definite bear country. So anyway, this is uh, this is a beautiful place, and this lake is full of fish, and it should be a really good time over the next few days. So thanks for being a part of it, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, supper's on the stove, and... Uh, we're just going to have a little sustenance tonight, but tomorrow we are going to feast. I'm really hoping to catch some pretty nice northerns tomorrow and bring one of them back for a uh, uh, poor man's lobster and show you some interesting way to fix that, which you probably have not seen before. I got out on the lake for a couple hours here this afternoon, and I uh, just kind of watched the depth finder and kind of cruised around, looked for some structure and so forth. I was surprised to find that the water's only 44 degrees. Uh, not sure what to think of the walleyes at 44 degrees. They may still be spawning, but uh, I did find a couple of bays where the water temperature was 50, and it, and that's probably where the northerns are going to be. So I'm pretty excited about uh, about getting out in the morning and uh, really catching some fish. And it should be a really good day tomorrow, and really looking forward it to it. So uh, I'm just going to hang around here uh, camp this evening and relax a little bit and just enjoy this beautiful view so we will see you in the morning well good morning already man was it cold last night holy smokes it got down probably into the upper 20s there's just heavy frost on everything and we got a cold north wind this morning pretty tough going for fishing here today i got a feeling but we're gonna go out and give it a try i had a nice big breakfast of pancakes and blueberries and bacon and, uh, really good hearty breakfast so i'll be good for a long time and we're just going to brave the cold here and go out and uh, see if we can shake a northern loose i know i'm the first person on this lake this year so at least the fish uh, haven't been looking at any lures so
found that shallow bay back in there. I figured that's probably where the northerns are going to be, and it turned out pretty good for me. Uh, it was over 50 degree water back in there when the rest of the lake is oh, about 43, 44 this morning. So uh, they were in there pretty good, and uh, I caught about a half a dozen over 30 inches. The uh, biggest one was uh, the biggest one I measured was 34, and uh, probably another 20 or so just little dink or hammer handle northerns that I really had a hard time getting those between uh, 24 to 27 you know I was really looking for about a 25 26 if possible uh, because you can't keep anything over 27 and uh, so I uh, man, I really struggled I thought I'm not going to be able to find one the right size for a meal but uh, eventually eventually got that 20 six incher and uh, I'm gonna cook it up here in a little bit um, the baits that really worked were uh, this baby bulger uh, I caught the most of them on this it's a double bladed uh, bucktail I guess you'd call it that my son makes and um, um, I tried another bait that he gave me he gave me a bunch of baits to try up here and uh, this was one of them I really like the color and this one looks really good in the water the difference is this one doesn't have blades that open wide and give you a lot of resistance so you have to reel this a lot faster and uh, to keep the blades really spinning good and, and get that vibration that you want I think this is going to be really good in the summer and I'm really expecting to catch some muskies on it uh, this bait here because it's got the wider blades um, I could fish it a little bit slower in this colder water and uh, that's why that worked. Uh, this baby bulger is a bait that he's been making since he was in high school. And man, I have literally caught hundreds and hundreds of muskies on this bait. And as you can see, it's a pretty good northern bait too. <clears throat> I also caught a few on a spinner bait. This is just a regular three quarter ounce spinner bait uh, with a gold blade and uh, fire tiger skirt. And uh, that was, uh, was a pretty good bait for, for uh, slow rolling through the areas where there was a lot more weeds and that didn't seem to matter if there was weeds or not I did catch northerns out of the weeds um, you know it's just dead last year's dead weeds but uh, uh, there was quite a few just kind of on the flats and pretty much all of them in fact I think all of them were between um, two and four feet deep and most of the weeds were in three and four feet so Anyway, it worked out pretty good. You got some nice fish and uh, uh, actually saw one walleye follow the uh, the baby bulger, so I know there's some walleyes in there too. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this. Uh, it's only 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but I'm hungry. I had breakfast at 6, and I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, northern cleaned up, and uh, we're going to make some, we're going to make a really good meal out of it. The white bones are much easier to take out of larger fish. I usually like to do about a 30 incher. Uh, I usually don't keep anything over 30 inches, but uh, the uh, regulations in this part of Ontario require you to release everything over 27 inches. So can hear them so you want to start right on the edge of the Y bones and you want to work right down you can feel the bones and you're gonna have a sliver of meat about there it is right there That's a boneless piece of meat right there. And then the other side of the Y bone, right above the ribs.
there and that piece of meat has all the Y bones in it. Then you just take the Okay, I've got the fish all washed up. Now here's where it gets interesting. I've never seen anyone else do this before, but I heard about this recipe. I guess it's not really a recipe. I'm just going to boil these fish in lemon-lime soda pop. Some people use salt water, some people use some sugar in their water. This is a really interesting way to do it. Now here's a recommendation, in fact it's very important, do not use diet soda pop when you're doing this. It's anything with aspartame in it, you got to make sure it never heats up, because it can be poisonous from what I hear. I'm no scientist or doctor. I don't know that for a fact, but this is what I've been told. So anyway, we're going to boil this for a few minutes, and in the meantime, we're going to make some beans. Okay, we're simply starting with one can of pork and beans. I'm going to add some onion flakes. chopped up bacon, brown sugar, and ketchup. We'll stir that all up and just simmer it. Okay, the beans are done, the fish is done, I've drained off the liquid, and I'm just going to put a half a stick of butter in there, and some garlic powder, about like so, and I'm going to stir that all in, melt it all good. And in a minute, we're going to have an amazing fish dish, I hope. First time I've ever done it exactly like this, so we'll see. Well, a friend of mine told me to be sure and try making poor man's lobster with 7-Up. Now, Sprite, 7-Up, Lemon Lime, Twist Up, whatever, it's all kind of the same thing. But this is the first time I've ever done it. Oh. Oh. Wow, you can taste the lemon. What? That's really good. Maybe a little bit of salt, or maybe garlic salt, instead of just garlic powder. Wow. I'm going to do that again. That's really good. Beans are good, too. Mmm my favorite way to make beans from my mom so this is poor man's lobster I don't feel like a poor man right now I think I may be the richest man alive actually thanks for being a part of this and uh, we'll be fishing walleyes in the next video so subscribe and be sure to stick around for more videos coming up mmm mmm Wow.